Hey guys, welcome to my vegetable garden. This is our little bit grimy now, but it used to be a pretty good vegetable garden. Over the summer, it gave us some nice produce. We had a couple different types of tomatoes. We had some cucumbers. Wasn't a ton, but you know, it's, it's good. Something else it gave us that wasn't a vegetable was this. So this is a Sphinx moth caterpillar. These are big, big, big caterpillars, but wait until they become adults. The, then they become sphinx moths with a wingspan about four and a half inches wide. That's big enough to be mistaken for a hummingbird. When they're caterpillars, we call them hornworms because they have this horn at the end of their body. When they are threatened, they take on this sphinx pose where they kind of rear up just like the sphinx. It doesn't scare me. Maybe it would scare someone. So this hornworm is going to eat and eat until he feels like he's ready to, to move on to the next step. He's going to say, ah, I'm full and I'm going to crawl down from this plant and form a pupa. So a few days ago when I found these big guys on my tomato plant, I thought, okay, this guy is going to go through some fantastic change. I want to see this. So I'm going to put it into a little enclosure and make sure there's some sticks, feed it some tomato leaves, and it will climb up to the top and hang from the top and create chrysalis down and it would turn into its moth or butterfly, whatever it is. I thought that was what would happen. Turns out the sphinx moth is different. The sphinx moth, instead of creating a cocoon or a chrysalis hanging from the top, it actually digs down into the soil. It goes down about six inches, eight inches, 12 inches deep sometimes so that it's out of the way of any predators or anything that wants to eat it while it's going to go through those changes. This guy is going to crawl down into the dirt and he's going to, he's going to create a brown leathery pupa that's going to be about as long as the caterpillar is right now with a little hook on the end, which is where his proboscis, his drinking straw is going to stick out as it develops. The life cycle of a moth or a butterfly is fascinating and I'm going to tell this to you and I want you to keep that magic but I also want you to think about you and your own journey. You were once a little egg and you have been developing and changing throughout your life and you're going through milestones and big changes are still coming up ahead and I want you to think about how this life cycle compares to yours. So we talk about human life cycle, you go through your elementary school years and you get into puberty and you go into high school, you become 18 and we say you're an adult, but then you still have brain development and physical development that goes on into your 20s. You're still developing all the way into your 20s. That is your development story. Our sphinx moth starts out as a little egg laid on a leaf because that's gonna be its first meal. Once it hatches out of that egg, it starts to eat and eat and nom nom nom. It eats until it's ready to change into its next stage. The sphinx moth actually goes through five different stages. It'll eat and grow and eat and grow and then it gets to the point that it feels like its skin is just a little too tight and it will take off a layer. It will crawl out of its old skin. It'll eat its old skin and then it will eat and grow and eat and grow until it feels like its skin's getting a little too tight and it will crawl out of its old skin and then it will eat and grow and eat. it does that five times. When it gets to the end of the fifth cycle, there are hormones in his body telling it that it needs to change into a moth. It needs to go from being a hornworm caterpillar to a sphinx moth. Those hormones also tell it behaviorally it's going to go and crawl down to the bottom of the plant, crawl into the dirt, and it starts pushing its way through the dirt, pushing its way into the soil and digs itself down until it feels like it's nice and safe. And then it curls itself up and its outer skin starts to harden. And inside, those same juices that were its digestive juices that it used to digest the tomato plant it's now using to digest itself and it's breaking down all of its body tissues starting over from scratch. It's like taking all the Legos apart and getting ready to put them back together. Almost nothing remains of that original caterpillar except for some muscle cells and some of the nervous system. The rest of it breaks down and what you have is cells that are really special. Special cells that can be turned into just about any body part. They are just blank slates that can become just about anything. And this is amazing. Okay, think of your own journey, how you started out as an egg and then you were born and then your first day of kindergarten and then your first day of middle school and then you'll go to high school and you've got all these new changes coming up. After two weeks, the moth crawls out of its pupa, that shell that it was in, and crawls up to the surface, to the ground, dries out its wings, stretches them out, and then it's ready to fly away and mate and lay eggs and start the life cycle all over again. Now I told you I wanted you to think about the moth and compare that to your 
your own growth and development. And you think about it, we're really not that different after all. Compare yourself to the moth and you'll notice that we're going through a lot of the same things. We both start out as eggs. We both go through changes. Some are a little more dramatic than others. We become one new version of ourselves, and hopefully that's a better version than the last. And I want you to think about, while you think that it's crazy that the sphinx moth, the caterpillar, that hornworm is going to crawl into a cocoon and take a nap for a while, he probably thinks it's pretty crazy you spent all that time in your mother before coming out into the sunshine. Check out these links to find out more about sphinx moths and metamorphosis. Have a great day, guys.